Hi guys, so let's talk about reservoir sampling algorithm today. I mean, this is a pretty important algorithm, like pretty commonly asked in a lot of top tech company interviews and a lot of algorithm lectures or, you know, algorithm courses do not cover this particular technique. So let's look into it. Let's see uh, what kind of problems it is used to solve. So first, let's look at a simpler problem, okay, which, uh, so the problem is this, that you are given an array of n integers, you have to return a random number from array. Each number in the array must have the same probability of getting chosen, that is 1 upon n. Okay, so like this is a pretty easy problem. All you have to do is just you can generate a random index between or a random number between 1 and n. And at that particular index, whatever number is there, you can return that. Okay, so the like algorithm is simple. You generate a random index between 0 and n minus 1 and you return the number present at that index in the array. In C, the code would look something like this that you gen this rand. Uh, method in C++ it basically gives you a random number between 0 and some maximum value to get a random number between 0 and n minus 1 you do a mod with n and eventually return whatever number is there at this particular index in the array so this guarantees that uh, like whatever number is chosen it has the probability 1 by n like probability of any number getting chosen is 1 over n but let's make this problem a bit difficult and then we'll see how that difficult version can be used, can be solved via reservoir sampling. So if you see here, our whole algorithm relies on the uh, value of n. Like if we do not know the value of n, we cannot solve this problem. So next question is this only that you have to actually uh, find a random number from array, but you do not know the, this n. Okay, you do not know how many numbers in, are in the array. So that's what uh, n is unknown. And the use cases are like, uh, what are the use cases in which n might be unknown? Like uh, one use case is that you might be getting a stream of numbers. So you do not know how many numbers you will receive from that stream. So you do not know the n there. Okay. You do not know the size of the stream. Other use case can be that if someone asks you to find a random node in a linked list and uh, all you are given is only the head pointer of linked list. You do not know what is the length of linked list and you are asked to find a random node in a single traversal. Okay. Like uh, one way to solve this is via double traversal. Like what you can do, you can once travel over the whole linked list, find the length of the, that linked list, how many nodes basically are there in the linked list. And then you can use this same algorithm. And then uh, whatever index you get, you can basically traverse to that particular index via pointers and you can return that particular node. But again, if you want to do that in single traversal, uh, reservoir sampling algorithm can do that. And another use case is that Maybe you have a very big file, okay, maybe 100 file uh, of size 100 GB and you need to find the random number in that. Now this big size of file cannot fit in your main memory, like usually by main memory I mean the RAM of the computer, like even my computer has only I think 16 GB RAM. So uh, and if someone asks you to, you know, again do this in single traversal of the whole file, find the random number from that file in a single traversal, how would you do that? And the constraint is again the same that uh, the probability of any number getting chosen must be same. That is uh, probability should be 1 over n. Any number getting chosen or any random number which you return, the probability of that should be 1 over n. The probability of uh, the algorithm which you develop should, should be 1 over n. Okay. So these kind of problems or these kind of the use cases are where we use uh, reservoir sampling algorithm like this is the application of reservoir sampling so let's first look into it what the algorithm actually is and then we will try to understand it we will also see the intuition and mathematical proof behind it and then we will also solve a lead code problem okay so let's first look at the algorithm so algorithm is simple like what we do is that we initialize a random number as minus one like any terminal value this will actually store our answer or the random number and this i we are initializing it to zero so i is basically how many numbers we have seen till now okay so in this while loop like we'll iterate in this while loop until we are receiving the numbers from the stream okay whatever number i am receiving from the stream i am uh, basically storing it in this num variable so i increase this increment this i that is we have uh, like i is actually storing the numbers we have seen till now so once we receive one number from stream we will increment this i then we will try to generate a random index uh, between 0 and i minus 1 okay so what we are trying to do is that uh, we are trying to generate a random index between 0 and i minus 1 this is a c++ code like this rand <coughs> method generates a as i already told you it will generate a random number between 0 and rand max to get a number between 0 and i minus 1 we just mod it with i and then if this random index which is generated is equal to i minus 1 
we set our random number as num okay we will repeat this procedure until we are getting the numbers from stream and eventually whatever number is stored in this random num variable we will return that okay so this is the reservoir sampling algorithm like it guarantees that whatever number is chosen or whatever number is present in this random num the, prob the probability of that getting chosen is 1 over n like uniform probability is guaranteed so let's look at the mathematical proof of this uh, this will also like that will also sh you know show you the intuition behind this algorithm i mean just by looking at this particular code it is very difficult to understand what it is doing so let's jump into it so let's look at a particular ai okay what is the probability of ai getting chosen so probability of ai getting chosen is that uh, basically probability of ai getting returned as a random number is that we choose ai at the ith step okay i mean ai can be chosen only in, at the ith step because when we are uh, if you see here when we are looking at this ith number we are setting that rand our random number or basically we are storing this number in our random number only at the ith step only when we see this number okay so that is probability of ai getting chosen at ith step multiplied by probability of ai not getting replaced by you know numbers which will come after ai that is the numbers ai plus 1 ai plus 2 ai plus 3 until and so on until an and so this can also be written as that probability of ai being chosen as a random number is equal to this probability ai getting chosen at ith step multiplied by probability of ai plus 1 not getting chosen into probability of ai plus 2 not getting chosen into probability of ai plus 3 not getting chosen and, and so on until probability of the last number that is an not getting chosen okay so let's look what this would expand out to be so let's first look at what is the probability of ai getting chosen at ith step so if you see here when we see the aith number we try to generate a random number between 0 and i minus 1 okay so the total possible outcomes here are i because we are generating a number between 0 and i minus 1 and the favorable outcome is only 1 because only when this random index which we have generated if it is equal to i minus 1 we update our random number we basically set it to equal to this aith so total possible outcomes i favorable outcome 1 so probability of ai getting chosen at ith step is 1 over i multiplied by probability of ai not getting replaced by ai plus 1 so that would be what 1 minus if you see here that would be 1 minus probability of ai plus 1 getting chosen like i am saying what is the probability of ai plus 1 not getting chosen it would be 1 minus probability of ai plus 1 getting chosen probability of ai plus 1 getting chosen is i plus 1 because it is similar to this only so 1 minus 1 upon i plus 1 into 1 minus similarly for ai plus 2 we do this 1 minus 1 over i plus 2 similarly and we will go on until the last number that is what is the probability that we do not uh, basically nth number is not chosen it is equal to 1 minus probability of nth number getting chosen so 1 minus 1 upon n so this is what uh, the previous you know previous formula span uh, basically expanded out to be and uh, now if you will you know further expand this like if you take the lcm here and uh, basically ship, uh, update the numerators and denominators it will expand out to be this 1 upon i will remain same into i plus 1 minus 1 upon i plus 1 like i took the lcm here we took the lcm as i plus 1 similarly we will take the lcm for i as i plus 2 here so it will expand out to be this i plus 1 minus 1 upon i plus 1 into i plus 2 minus 1 upon i plus 2 and so on until this n minus 1 upon n okay now let's do this addition and subtractions so these will expand out to be something like this 1 upon i into i upon i plus 1 into i plus 1 upon i plus 2 and so on until n minus 1 upon n now you can clearly see here that these numerators and denominators are same so they will cancel out each other like this i will cancel out this i i plus 1 will cancel out this i plus 1 this i plus 2 will cancel out this i plus 2 this i plus 3 will cancel out the numerator of the next term which is i plus 3 similarly this n minus 3 will get cancelled out by the denominator of previous term similarly this n minus 2 please will be get will be cancelled by this n minus 2 this n minus 1 will be cancelled by this n minus 1 okay so that's what i have done here in the red marks and all we are left with this is this 1 and this n so this probability of ai comes out to be 1 over n which is true for all i okay so hence we have proved here mathematically that reservoir sampling guarantees that any ai getting chosen uh, like any AI getting chosen will be with uniform probability and that probability is equal to 1 over n like every element has equal chances of getting chosen okay 
so this was the very simple mathematical proof of reservoir sampling algorithm and if you noted one more thing here then that in this algorithm we have never used the n which was the size of the stream or the size of the array right we are nowhere using n hence reservoir sampling can be used to solve the problems where we want the random number from a stream or from an array or from a linked list and we do not know its length okay because you can clearly see here we are not using the length of the stream or length of anywhere in this particular code or in this particular pseudo code now let's look at a lead code problem as well so the lead code problem is here like it has written a lot of story but the thing is that you are actually are supposed to find a random node from linked list and each node must have the same probability of getting chosen okay and like one way is that you can do it in two traversal but let's do it in a single traversal so here is what your solution class looks like uh, in the constructor you will be given the head so you only know the head pointer of the linked list and this get random method you have to implement which will return the random node from linked list and yeah i mean anyone who calls this get random should get the random node basically the value of the random node because it is returning the int so let's look at the code so code is pretty simple like i have implemented the reservoir sampling algorithm here what i have done is that i have uh, basically created a member variable head m underscore head which will store the head pointer so here in the constructor i am storing the head pointer this is c++ implementation so this is the get random so this uh, i initialize the node c until now as zero so this is i only which was i in the code which i showed you in the sublime text okay so this is uh, I have given it a more intuitive name rather than I that is node C until now. I initialize my current pointer as head and this random node will actually store our random node which we have to return. So until we have exhausted the whole linked list that is while current pointer not equal to null PTR, I basically update or increment the node C until now. I generate a random index between uh, 0 and node C until now minus 1. Okay, That's what I am doing here at line number 24 this one and then we see if this random index is equal to node c until now minus one we update our random node as current node and we basically advance the current pointer and eventually we will return whatever value is there for the random node okay so this is the reservoir sampling algorithm we did it in single traversal of linked list time complexity of this algorithm is order n where n is the length of linked list space complexity is order one so thank you guys for watching i hope you like this video please do not forget to like subscribe and comment and i will see you all